Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to today's uh, special live coverage. Today, a new page of the nation's uh, bright papers opens today with His Highness the Amir Sheikh Mish'al Al-Ahmed Al-Jabr Al-Sabah. May Allah protect and bless him, taking the constitutional oath to be the 17th ruler of the state of Kuwait in accordance with the constitution and the succession law. In continuation of the constitutional procedures, the National Assembly will hold a special historic session less than an hour from now for His Highness the Amir Sheikh Mish'al Al-Ahmed to be sworn in, in accordance with the text of Article 60 of the Constitution. After the Council of Ministers named His Highness the Amir of the country in its extraordinary session on Saturday in accordance with Article 4 of the Succession Law. Correspondingly, the National Assembly Speaker Ahmed Al Sadoun called for the special session which came in line with Article 72 of the National Assembly Statute which called for a special session upon the request of the government or 10 members of the parliament stating the reason for the session within a period of 48 hours. After a march full of achievements and distinguished stations in official positions which continued for six decades, today the state of Kuwait begins a new era in its long life with His Highness Sheikh Mish'al Al-Ahmed Al-Jabr Al-Sabah assuming taking the oath as the Emir of the country in a smooth procedures for the transition of the power succeeding His Highness the late Emir Sheikh Nawaf Al-Ahmed may Allah have mercy on his soul. But before we start this special, special coverage, let's watch this report. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبي is moving steadily towards a golden future crowned with glory since the era of course correction led by the late Emir Sheikh Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Jabr Al Sabah may Allah have mercy on his soul during his three year term during which the country witnessed remarkable progress on all levels political, economic, social, and humanitarian. Today, the country is on the verge of a renewed era. A new sun is shining in its sky, and it is on the path of correction. 
Today, carrying the banner of glory, a faithful emir of the country, His Highness Sheikh Michel Ahmed al Jabr al Sabah, may Allah protect and bless him, assumes power and leadership of the country, succeeding his brother, the late emir Sheikh Nawaf al Ahmed al Jabr al Sabah, may Allah rest his soul, thus becoming the 17th ruler of the state of Kuwait. A distinguished high profile edifice to allow the most prominent event at this stage to take place and in accordance with the provision of Article 60 of the Kuwaiti Constitution, which stipulates that the Emir takes the constitutional oath before exercising his power in a special session of the National Assembly. Thus His Highness the Emir of the country, Sheikh Mishal al-Ahmed al-Jabr al-Sabah, may Allah protect and bless him, is the fifth Emir to take the constitutional oath before the National Assembly in the country's history. The late Emir, Sheikh Abdullah al-Salim, was the first ruler to take the oath before the National Assembly in its first session, back in 1963. And despite the passage of 13 years since its assumed power, it carried out work based on the articles of the close contract the ruler and the people accepted, the Kwaiti Constitution. Fresh smoothness like pure spring water flowing from era to era, like the sun of a homeland during the day, renewing hope for a brighter future and horizon. The best successor to the best predecessor, as we have known the government since the dawn of Kuwaiti history. Over the past three years, His Highness Sheikh Mishal al Ahmed al Jabr al Sabah was the faithful supporter of the late Emir. May Allah have mercy on him. He participated in decision making and represented him at some times and on some occasions. He carried the burden of great responsibility for him and fulfilled the great trust so that the state of Kuwait today is on the verge of a golden era that is expanding and a great era that is being renewed. Dear viewers, we are accompanied here in the studio with our distinguished uh, guest, uh, political analyst, Mr. Jassim Qabazart. Mr. Jassim, uh, good morning and thank you for being here with us today. Good morning to you. Thank you very much. Mr. Appreciate for being again with you. We have so many questions uh, for you today, as you know, and uh, we'd like to get some uh, few information uh, for our viewers uh, here today. Yes. Sir Jassim, before we start, we are awaiting uh, the special public session of the National Assembly, as you all know today, this morning for the Emir of the country to take the constitutional uh, oath in accordance with Article 60 of the Constitution. Yes. Sir Jassim, what meanings do we draw from such an important event uh, repeated from era to era? It is a continuation of a policy mm -hmm. of the Al Sabah family, abiding by the rules and regulations of the Constitution of Kuwait abiding by the uh, heritage of Kuwait in its social life, in its political life, in its economic life, and um, being a consultative nation mm -hmm. have always been a, a signature for Kuwait. So this era will be a continuation of previous ones, and it is a known fact uh, of Kuwait, of gaining its reputation and respect locally, internationally, regionally because of this unified lifestyle which has been uh, created by the harmony between the rulers and the people of Kuwait. Sir Justin, before we dig more into that question, uh, we would like to uh, see to what degree was the smoothness and flexibility of the transfer of power from one era to another here in Kuwait. I think, like previous ones, 
this particular uh, change of leadership, as we see, happened very normally, very casually, very and smoothly. very smoothly, actually, because it was, first of all, the intentions of the people involved, being the ruling family and the public, mm -hmm. has always been a positive, progressive, and also a conservative. Uh, way, a conservative style of uh, relationship. Um, nobody here um, has the, uh, let's say, past experience of being violent or rough, let's say, uh, in, in dealing with transitions of power mm -hmm. in all levels, not just Correct. between the rulers themselves, even talking about the people among themselves, businessmen. So the as we say, the friendly, uh, one family lifestyle has always been the signature of Kuwaiti interrelationships. Therefore, uh, the ruling family did allow for a smooth transition by the way they dealt with the sequence of events and, uh, uh, let's say, preparing themselves for all kinds of uh, changes in policy, changes in lifestyle. So the transition was very smooth. Uh, was very th well thought out mm -hmm. and uh, it was all taken in the right steps and the right time as soon as the late His Highness the Emir, peace, may he rest in peace, rest in peace. Uh, went through the uh, what he went through, the, the, the difficulty he had with his health. The uh, Crown Prince was doing his job as, as he was deputized by him mm -hmm. earlier. So he did job uh, almost as though it was the emir, you know, Correct. in a way that it was acceptable by the people, by the National Assembly, and by the emir himself. So is, is determining the method of transition of government constitutionally uh, what ensures its smoothness for countries in general? Yes, it is. And it is well spelled out by the Constitution. There is no discrepancy, there is no misunderstanding. It has always been a very strong guideline, even in the most difficult times, I recall when uh, His Highness the Amir uh, uh, Jabir al-Ahmed, may he yeah. rest in peace, um, was on the deathbed, let's mm -hmm. say. Um, the Crown Prince at the time, Sheikh Saad, may he rest in peace, was in a condition which was unable to rule, urban to conduct business. Mm -hmm. And the National Assembly very respectfully, very uh, professionally, smoothened the transition so that they did not need to go to the Crown Prince and uh, Sheikh Sabah Al-Ahmed was therefore becoming the Emir after that. Because of this smooth transition. transitional, let's say, process which is spelled out clearly in the uh, Constitution of Kuwait. Mm -hmm. Sir Jassim, uh, let's talk more about today. Yes. What are uh, the steps that follow the oath of office of the ruler of the country before a parliament, and, uh, according, which is according to the Kuwaiti constitution? Well, business has to be as usual, as we say. Mm -hmm. uh, the government, the cabinet is still there. The National Assembly is there. But there's a very important speech which was uh, given by previous Crown Prince, now His Highness the, the Emir, Emir of Kuwait where he was very critical of both his cabinet members mm -hmm. and the performance of the National Assembly. Mm -hmm. But he was in any critical in a positive way, let's say. Correct. Uh, you know, constructive criticism, as we call it. So I believe now that he is the Emir of Kuwait, it's an opportunity to implement and mm -hmm. overlook and make sure that whatever he meant during his uh, speech that both parties, the legislative party and the executive party, would abide by the rules and regulations of running the country in mm -hmm. a smooth and productive manner. So what he's looking for is productivity, achievement of goals, uh, implementing the, uh, let's say, the projects which are outstanding, all of these projects which the people of Kuwait are awaiting Correct. for it to materialize, become real, mm -hmm. housing, education, many, many aspects. Which are on the right track, as uh, we exactly. speak. Exactly. He has right. to put it back on right track. And also, he is 
uh, he initiated the, a, a, a government authority to follow up the performance of the government Governance projects. Government sectors and government This is a, a very right. unique, let's say, um, uh, achievement by him, which indicates how uh, honest and how uh, serious he is about making sure that the country runs smoothly. Let's talk more about it. Uh, the government uh, sector checkups. Yes. And uh, how long has it been going? As far as I remember, I don't know the date, but it's more than five, six years. Five, been six gone. years, yes. correct. And uh, he particularly, uh, when he was not in the office, but he was appointed at the time to, to run this uh, authority, he was at the time deputy, uh, deputy chairman of the National Guard. Correct. Right? But his, his uh, lifestyle, 